I'm reminded of a fictional camping trip that Sherlock Holmes and his trusted partner Watson once took. And during the night, Watson wakes Holmes from a sound sleep and he says, Sorry to wake you, but I wanted to share with someone the incredible beauty of this star-filled sky above us tonight. When I see the stars, he said, I'm amazed by their brilliance. What do you think about it, Holmes? When you lay on your back and you look up and see the stars, just like we are tonight. To which Sherlock Holmes replied, Watson, old boy, here's what I think. I think someone has stolen our tent. <laughs> Anyway, with or without a tent, no matter where we look, up or down or around or in or under, everywhere we see beauty so great that it should lead us all to seek God out. I'd like to talk to you in this devotional about God revealed in his creation. I want to look into Psalm 19. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4 to you here. It says this, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There's no speech, or there are, there are no words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. So, it's not known for sure when David wrote this psalm. He may have written it as a shepherd boy while he was in the Judean hills, lying on his back on a dark night, staring up at the star-spangled splendor of the sky. He might have written it as a fugitive while he was hiding in the mountains from Saul's bloodhounds, or might have written it when he was on the run in the mountains from Absalom. He may have even written it on a quiet evening when he was pacing on the rooftop of his palace. He might have lifted his eyes from the darkened streets of the slumbering city to these blazing pinpoints of light that filled the black velvet sky. So, whether a boy or a hunted fugitive or a powerful king, David wrote this great hymn, and he handed it to the director of music to be used in worship for the edification and instruction of the people. Either way, in this simple passage, David reminds us of three things in regard to creation that reveals God in a mighty way. The first thing is in verse 1. Creation is an unmistakable witness to God. So as David witnessed the spectacular sunrises and sunsets over the years, God's Spirit moved him to write, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. The stars are God's oldest testament. Read about that in Genesis 1. It's as if David sees the heavens as a preacher standing behind a pulpit, announcing the glory, the, even the weightiness of God. The Hebrew word for God in these verses is the basic title for God, the Creator God. So from the telescope to the microscope, nature shouts the virtues of a magnificent God. In other words, as Erwin Lutzer once said, in creation, God went public. You see, there in the sky is God's unmistakable witness to himself. Secondly, we find in verse 2 that creation is an untiring witness to God, because it says, verse 2, day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. Uh, David may have not have known that the gospel was written in the stars, but the fact that they were there marching across the heavens was an unmistakable witness to God. Even more amazing is that they are always there, never growing tired of shining, never tired of declaring the glory of God. There's no pause in their song. From day to day and night to night, the heavens he said it right here, pour out speech. The Hebrew word for pour out literally means bubbling up. It pictures a natural spring that continues to give a fresh water supply. There's neither a pause nor a break in the concert of beauty and vastness and steadfastness of order that we see in the skies above. And even though David knew little about proton and neutron reactions, and me too, or much about the galaxies, or nothing about thermonuclear fires, or hydrogen clouds and solar flares, he did know that the stars were a timeless testimony to their creator, God. See, there's never been a moment in the history of the human race when the heavens were not testifying to us about God's infinite power and wisdom. The stars and the oceans and the mountains and animals and fish and birds and insects never tired of saying, the hands that made us are divine. 
I think it was Warren Wiersbe that put it this way. Nature preaches a thousand sermons a day to the human heart. A third thing we found in the passage, it's in verses 3 through 6, but basically 3 and 4. Creation is an understandable witness to God. It says there, there is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. So just think about it. God's message in nature goes out every day and every night in every language to every land. Ha, huh, that's amazing. So in a choir of colors and patterns and light, contrast and shape and proportion, creation sings its praise to God. It's interesting. The same moon that we see in our sky is the same one that the people in Texas or Taiwan or Tahiti see. The same stars that look down on us at night are the same stars that David watched as he wrote this psalm. So from Moscow to Memphis, from Rome to, to the rainforest, from, from Albania to Antarctica, everywhere there is understandable evidence of God. Everywhere you go in this world of ours, you can see God revealing himself and what he has made. And we learn from the psalmist here that it should be obvious to anyone, anyone, that there is a God. You'd have to be blind not to see this truth. No matter where we look, up or down, around or in or under, everywhere we see created beauty so great that it should lead us all to seek out God. You know what I'm talking about. It's that mind-staggering beauty of creation that causes a hush to fall on a group of people who step out under the stars in, in, a, in a quiet, still night. It's the response of, come look, that draws people to the window to see the double rainbow or to see a shooting star. It's the mystery of the moment when the, when the infinite God reaches out to our spirits and the silence falls on us. It's times like this that we gain a clear understanding that there is a creator, there is a God. So before I pray, I just want to say it. Thank you, God, for the heavens that declare your glory, that pour forth understanding to your creation that you are the creator of life and everything there is. That's a hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the way you reveal yourself to us. There's no question. Next week, we're going to look at how you reveal yourself to us through your word. But right now, Father, as we walk out the door of our home, and as we look up into the sky and across the fields, we will have evidence of a creator and evidence that there is a God. Thank you for revealing that to us and reminding us. Help us to spread the good news of the message. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.